Hi, this is Mr. Max. I have given uh, the learners today a vectors test, so I thought it would be um, worth your while if I can share it with you as well. So let me go directly to the first question. This question here says that the diagram here, it shows triangle ABC, the point D as you can see here, it lies on the line BC. And it divides this line, BC, in the ratio 2 is to 1. And point E here is the midpoint of line AC. So therefore, if we are given further information that B to A is equal to vector A, and BC is equal to vector B, and we know that BD is 2 thirds of that 2 is to 1 vector uh, ratio, therefore DC will be 1 parts of the three. So now they ask us, and also obviously that E is the midpoint of this line, therefore A to E will be exactly the same as E to C. Right, so they ask us to write down AC, all right? So in terms of, so when you are writing AC and you look, it's basically, as I said, it's you move along from A to C, it's like you're going down AB, plus BC, but you're going against that vector A there. So therefore that's going to be minus, but then the whole BC is B. So it's going to be minus A plus B. Of course, you can go ahead and write it also the other way around as B minus A. Surely it is the same thing, okay? All right, so you are not going to lose a mark for that. The next one they want you to do is to find B to E. Now, obviously, you can't go B, D, and D, E because you don't have D, E yet. So the best option to go from B to E is to go along here, that is B, A, plus A, E. So we know that B, A is A, and we know that A, E is actually a half of A, C. We already determined what A, C is. So I bring back my AC, then I can clean this up, all right? So we multiply out that half, and then you collect here, so like terms here, that's A, 1E e plus 1, a half E, okay? So basically, you're going to get, if you subtract 1A minus a half A, you're going to get half A, and then you're going to get plus a half B, okay? So... Uh, if you multiply out, you realize exactly that's what you're going to get. And that is exactly the answer for that particular solution. All right, let's go on. Then let me bring the diagram back. So they want us to now to find DE. So it's quite important enough to go from D to E. We can go along DB. Then we can go along BA. Then we can go along AE, but it's rather a long way to go from D to E. So we can take the vector DC plus CE, all right? So we already determined what AE is. So we know that AC or CA or C to A, half of that is going to be the same distance as CE. And we know already what AC is, so I'll just bring that in from my previous, I'll just change it around. So when you are here, you are nearly done. So you just need to multiply out this half, all right? So you can separate those vectors there. So when I multiply a half times A, that's half A, and a half times minus B, that's minus a half B. And then these two here are like terms, or you can actually simplify a third minus a half. Well, when you are here, you can also leave your answer like that, or ideally you can take out a common factor, and a common factor that goes into 1 over 6, and 1 over 2 is 1 half. But as I said, this answer here should also do. Right, then the same question had further vectors P given to you as a column vector 3, negative 5, Q is 4, 4, R is negative 2, 2. So here is going to be, you multiply vector P by that scalar quantity of 2, and you minus Q then. So when you have a scalar of 2, you multiply that scalar, 2 times 3 gives you 6, and 2 times negative 5 gives you the negative 10. So from here you can add and subtract. So 6 minus 4, that gives you 2, and negative 10 minus 4, that gives you negative 14. And that's all that you had to do for this particular question.
Now, the magnitude, this question was rather poorly, poorly answered. It looks like uh, most of the students don't understand what that means. We are looking here for the length, all right, of that line segment. And in order for us to find the length, we have to bring in Pythagoras. But what we advisable to do is to find the sum and the difference of P plus Q minus 2R. And you clean that up. So you go get your P there. And then you get your Q there. All right. And your R there. And you clean that up. And you should arrive at 11, 3. That is the vector. So we now use this vector and find the column vector for that. Okay, so now find the modulus, the magnitude of that vector. So 11 square plus 3 square, that gives you 130 square. That is 100, the square root of 130. And then you can give your answer is 11.4 units. Right, then they ask, what is the special relationship between Q and R? So when you look at Q and when you look at R, you can see that there is something here. All right, you will realize that Q is actually... If you take out a negative 2R, so they are parallel, okay? That is exactly what we are looking for in that particular answer. Right, question 2, let me bring in a diagram here. So they are saying here, BD to DA, BD to DA is in the ratio 1 to 2, and CF is equal to FA. And you can see already by those dashes there that these two are exactly equal. And then they also say that CF is N, and then also EF is 2M, but the whole of B to A is 3. So that is 2M, that is your E, uh, did you have there, the 2M? And because of the ratio, the ratio is 1 is to 2, so 1 part out of the 3 and 2 parts out of the 3. So that is also then equal to that, because of these particular dashes here that indicated AF, is equal to CF. Right, so from here now, you can answer the questions. They say, right in terms of M and N, using that M and N, the vectors find E, C. Now, when you go from E to C, you have to go up here, that is 2M, and against here. So you're going to go 2M minus N, effectively. So it's E to F plus F to C. And what you get is going to be the vector 2M minus N. Then DE also, write them in terms of M or N. It means your answer can contain M and N or just one of them, okay? So when you go from D to E, again, you can't really go DB plus BE because you have got some missing stuff here. So ideally, you have to go from D to A plus A to F plus F to E. You write them down, you clean them up, you realize you are only left with minus N as an answer there. Then we had to express BD in terms of M. Well, that's very easy. You can see it's just going to be M. Okay. Right. So let me bring in my diagram again. Now you're supposed to explain why DE is parallel to AC. Well, if you had to look at what AC was, we already determined AC is minus 2A. And then DE was minus N from our previous question. So this is basically that AC is a multiple of that, okay? It's a multiple of DE. One of the problems that students are doing here, they go and say that AC is parallel to DE. That information is already given to you. You need to explain why. So that multiple there makes it to be parallel. Now you are given then three vectors, A, B, and C, and D, or four of them, rather, and then you're supposed to uh, multiply here vector B by 2 and then minus vector C from this very product. So again, you go and punch in 2, and then you bring in vector B minus vector C. Well, your 2 times 2 gives you that 4 here, and 2 times negative 4 gives you that negative 8, and you go ahead and you subtract the components from each other, okay? 4 minus 7 gives you negative 3, and negative 8 minus 4 gives you negative 12. Right, here again, we go with the magnitude of the vector. So first, find what is A and what is B. All right, so let's just find the sum of that. So when we find the sum of that, I get 1, negative 4. That is the sum of vector A plus vector B. And now that I know what the sum is, I can find the modulus by using Pythagoras. That's how you 
find the magnitude of this vector. Okay, so square root of 17, which equals to 4.12 units. Right, now you are supposed to use the vectors that we got here in the previous question, all right? And uh, in order for us to form simultaneous equations, which obviously we're going to have to solve later on. All right, so let me bring vector B back here, and vector C here, and vector D. And from here, you just can input what uh, vector B is, the X is the scalar there, and Y is, and then you have got the 18 over 0. Now, you just have to multiply the x component with the x, the scalar with every component in that vector. So that gives you 2x plus 4y equals to 18. Negative 4x plus 4y equals to 0. That's all that you had to do in this particular question. Okay? Write down two simultaneous equations. Right, so here you have to solve them. So let me bring my equations back here. Now I look at this second equation, I see that I can divide throughout by negative 4 because negative 4 goes here that is x times negative 4 so the negative sign changes the sign and negative 4 goes into 0 0 times so the reason why I did that I can make y the subject of a formula here okay so once I do that okay I, it will be x is equal to y or y is equal to x is the same thing now I have got this particular equation here that is the simplest form from x minus y equals to 0 so if both the two things is equal to zero, you subtract it equal to zero, it means they must be equal. So now I will then substitute this value for y, or x is totally up to you, all right, into one of the equations. So I substituted 2y into, or the y into 2y plus 7y equals 18. You clean that up, you get 9y is equal to 18, 18 divided by 9. So that gives you the value of y. Now, to find the value of x is very easy. So if y is equal to x, therefore, they must be equal, okay? So x is also equal to 2. Very straightforward. There, of course, there are other ways of solving simultaneous equations, all right? But the objective here was for you to be able to create them and then solve them. Then the last question here, you're supposed to describe here the single transformation that maps figure A, B, C onto figure A dash B dash C dash. Those primes there indicate that you are dealing with some sort of transformation. And this here, here is the object, okay? It's the object, it's the original. Now, what you have here after a certain transformation took place this here is the image all right so you're going to see as well the um, video that i'm going to post on transformation so this is a translation and a translation is a sliding movement okay and and we we, we write it by about a vector so you can take point a and then you take its corresponding point and you see it goes one two three four units to the right okay and then one two units upwards so that's the vector there all right so it's totally up to you which particular point you want to choose you can take point c here so that is one two three four again that is four all right and then one two up so that gives you exactly the same vector the same applies when you take point b there all right so you take your a and your a prime to check what the answer is. Or you pick B and B prime, okay? So you find the vector. So from the vector from that to that, obviously I have to go along here, all right, which was four units here, and I'm up here, which is how I get my two units here. So the bottom line is you're supposed to find this very straightforward question in order for you to do that, since because most of you got it wrong, it's because you did not go through your work. All right, that does it for this particular test. It's Mr. Max signing off here with some Koffer Mathematics.